Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We're waiting for a couple of guys to pop in, but what we are uh, busy with is live streaming of Eivor's Axe, Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla. Yeah, that's it. Episode 2.1 for the guys that are still keeping count. Otherwise, we are straight in it. How's it going, brother? Good morning, Mr. Zvon. How's it going, bud? Nick, all the way from New York. How's it going, bud? Right, so uh, as you can tell, I am busy working on the axe, yeah? Specifically, this extremely confusing graphic that I have here. Um, now, obviously, this is on a contour. And uh, it is skewing the perception or the perspective. So I can't use that. Uh, on the poster that I was given, there, right there, is once again a skewed perspective. So how do you do? How do you, how do you get to that? Yeah. Um, so this is what I'm, I'm busy doing. And I started this about 15 minutes ago. So um, the, the thing here is uh, using your phone. Yeah. Done. Take a photo of that, and then you can uh, well enlarge it. Cause my eyes are bad, man. That's about it. Yeah, Matt, how's it going, dude? Welcome. Yeah, so my eyes are pretty shot. So what I do need to do is just slip a piece of uh, blank paper under this. Uh, if I can find one. That isn't too incriminating. There we go. Yeah. So now the world can see what we're doing. And that's not much because currently I am having my coffee break. Yeah. And this mug has just been refilled the entire morning. All right. So let me get this oak. Squeezed up. We're just going to slap it down there because I do need that reference. Yeah, but I don't want it on my mouse side uh, because we've got Mickey. How's it going, dude? And then Robert. How's it going, but All right. So what I need to do is first off establish center. So what I've done is I've I've kind of replicated what we have there. But uh, if I now draw a center line through this. We're around about established where center sits. That is in the middle. Yeah. So if I draw the same line through here, you can see that this, through my perspective, as that is the center, this needs to come down. So this is what we're doing. We're sticking to uh, the basic idea, but then adapting this. So it becomes more. Sorry, man. I need to be able to swing this thing around. Uh, I want this to come down and swing in there. Is that it? What is a sketchy show? Oh, don't do that, you dumbass. I need to have this suspended. Huh. I didn't know I'm going to do that. Uh, where's my camera rig? That might work. I might have to set up a camera rig. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Because uh, my secondary camera is out here. So let me move that first. Sorry, man. You should be used to this by now. And I need to just change cameras because I normally use my phone as a stream deck. In other words, to flip through cameras. And now I can't because I'm using my phone as a, a little thingy. But I have got the suspension rig for my cell phone, which I now need to change everything up and move this thing around to the other side of the desk. Also, this is what I was talking about. That there might just do the trick. 
Oh, I'm going to have to walk around with this. I'm hoping this is going to work. So we take the articulating arm stick it in its little holster there and bring it down like so now i can take the phone hook that in there still have my reference okay and if i lock everything up now i should still have my reference and i should be able to uh, just check if this thing now glares on camera Let's go back to the green cam. Yes, it does. So now I need to talk that back up. Lock that up even more. That's good. Switch off overhead lights. I see the camera's feedback. Or the phone's feedback on the camera. Come on, adjust to the lights now. Oh, this thing has gone to sleep. We don't want that. Now we are ready for recording again. Sweet. Okay. And this is why I hate recording builds. Because it takes 10 fucking times longer than uh, just being able to sit and do the job. Yeah. Because now I've got shadows on here, which wasn't there before. So I need to switch on the overhead light again, which the shadows are less. Damn it. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. So that is supposed to go there. That is supposed to go there based on that center line. It has to come down even more. So we're going to do it there. I see there's a whole load of comments, man. We'll get to those in a moment, yeah? Just bear with me, guys. And that one is going to go there. That one is going to go there. That's going to kind of go. That's kind of where we are. But is that now too far back? Is it? No, because it looks like it overlaps that one there. Does it? I don't freaking know. I don't know. See, now this view here shows me not much. It does show that that comes in. And I'm assuming that's a section of shadow or freaking something. But let's assume this thing does that. And then this one does that. Does that make sense? Confirmation on that one. It comes over and the other one is behind it. Does look like that, yeah? Okay, now you can see the perspective here is not giving me a lot of info based on this here. Now I'm assuming this could be a hell of a lot, although that border does sit there. Yeah, so this obviously pulls in ever so slightly. I don't freaking know. I don't know what that shadow is. But, okay, so we move that. Let's just take the sticky tape off there. Hmm, dreaming up stuff. It is, and obviously with this thing now there, let me lower it lower without glaring at the camera so I can actually use my bloody reference. Can I still, yeah, I can still move. So we say we want this thing larger. Yeah, we want it to go all the way to the end. I want that a bit bigger. We want to come up higher with that? No, not really. So we're going to stick with that lay of the line there. Might have to make it thinner, but let's just get all the freaking parts in first. Yeah. So we'll work that. That's kind of where we're going. We know we've got some of the dodgy line coming in there. 
and it should go up there so that's pretty much where i've got those where they actually go no one knows it goes in and crosses again below halfway so if i use that cross section there and that cross section there as a reference in halfway you can see that that there should come up ever so slightly we do want all of us to blend in and yeah, you can see that that circle there is completely wrong so we'll do that and we'll set up the second one which is there yeah that's going to go behind there that's going to do its thing and it's going to cross there and then be on baseline which is that there don't do that come on have we got that so that goes over oh crap see this one it looks like that actually ties in and it doesn't make a little loopy loop so it does look that uh, this line coming down is actually that line coming up so this line going down is actually hold on let's do that one first i think i've got it that one there feeds in to that there is that possible that feeds in there and then this one where does this go It's supposed to come out there. That's just bad design, man. See, there's a whole load of comments, so I'm hoping someone else has picked up this dodgy issue I have here. And I'd, I'd like to add a bit of space in there. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Come on, man. That there. Is that there? Underneath there. Yeah. And then this thing is... Can't see. I can see that long one coming from up here. Doing something goes behind that one that we've established goes behind that dude can that be at least i'm using full width here which is good I might have to bring it in ever so slightly so I actually have clearance for the carving Am I going over? Am I going under? That one went under, so this one should directly be over. Is it? Like the no. On this drawing, which is that one is under and under. So under. That one sits there. That one sits there. Oh, I'm going to spend some quality time with this bloody drawing. I can tell you that much. Let's see. Got a whole load of guys in here, man. Uh, Mickey, Robert, that we covered. Matt. Excellent, dude. A small meat smoker into a charcoal forge. I wouldn't do that because then you won't be able to smoke your meat anymore, yeah? And a small charcoal forge, all you need is, damn, dude, you, you only need, like, the really basic stuff to build a charcoal forge, yeah? Uh, you can build a charcoal forge by just taking fiber and stacking it up, uh, doing a turi, which is the, the air intake at the bottom. Uh, you can do a side blast, uh, Japanese-style 
from the side, just two side walls. So you've got two walls with uh, your blast coming in from the side. Done. That, that's the most simple forge to build. I wouldn't sacrifice a meat smoker, dude. Uh, some people would call that sacrilege. Oh, I don't know. I might be one of them. <laughs> dude, I like that. <laughs> Love the Nick, man. That's the best one so far I've seen in a while. The village drunk. Welcome, brother. Um, this is uh, Bladesmiths Anonymous. Today we're dealing with uh, perspective, yeah, or the lack thereof. Mornay, how's it going, dude? How's it going, brother? Welcome back, by the way. Sup, Sean? It's brilliant to see the regulars in, man. Eugene, how's it going, dude? And then Valhalla Ironworks. Oh, Alex is Alec is in the house, man. <laughs> Exceptional. Exactly, brother. Thank you, man. It's appreciated. Uh, Matt, is this the handle design? Yes, it is. It is the, the back end of the handle, the ass end of the axe handle. So I've got the basics of it in here. Yeah, so I started shaping that axe handle. Let me just take the comment off. So I started shaping the axe handle. Yeah, and you can see we've got divots on there. And on this side, I started carving the actual crevice. So as you can see on this actual photo there, yeah, you can see it goes around and then at the top it leaves like a, a little spacer at the top. So if you view this from the top, you should almost see like a band running through, but almost, almost, almost. So um, yeah, the camera isn't all that brilliant. You can see that slight as it comes off the rounding, it is just ever so slightly pulled up, yeah? So this is game art, and I'm trying to get as close to the original as possible. But as you can see, that the reference is, is really sad, man. Um, and then if we look at the side of this, you can see at the bottom, once again, this is a reference. Uh, the gap at the bottom here. Now, keep in mind that that is going over the, the crest there, as we've now established on that there. Yeah, so as we've established there, it goes higher up than just that. That's why it's fading up at the top there. But this here does give me an indication that this isn't sitting straight in the middle. So if we've got a more, more side-on view of this, that there does not go all the way to the bottom. So that there will not go all the way to the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. It might be just skewed perspective. Don't know, man. I don't know. That makes sense in my little world. But it does look odd, though. Yeah. It does look odd. But I've carved that, and that's what I spent this morning doing. So, I mean, I, based on my original sketches, you can, I don't know if you can actually see, this goes down to, to about there. But then once again, this doesn't make sense. As that stupid artwork that we're working on now is actually not that broad. I don't know. And all the guys that have built 3D models of this thing, um, man, I don't know. They, they, some of the guys are focused on it. Uh, a lot of guys actually got this entire design wrong. So um, I don't know if I should be using them as reference. Yeah. Uh, but I have been given creative freedom on this. And on the hindsight, I should have built this other one. Yeah. Because that would have been a hell of a lot easier. I can tell you that much. But I am lacking this. So I'm, I'm using the same sketch as I want to keep all my reference material uh, together. Yeah. And, and this, with that there, it looks a little better. But it's not the same thing, although they, you can see that they've tried to mimic the same type of, I don't know, lizardly what, what. But it doesn't look like this one has got a face. Yeah. Which doesn't make any sense. I initially thought that was it. But now you can clearly see on this here or on. The zoomed in and please don't show any weird stuff now on that there you can see that it's it's purely just a little curvy i was hoping that was going to be a a face of, a, of another little dragon so but not it is just this weird ass little thing that sits there okay but i need to move my camera back ever so slightly as i'm falling off my table so we're gonna just push everything back Ever so slightly, and now we've got glare again. Let's knock that. Yeah, that's better. 
Sorry, I've got numerous lights, and depending on where stuff sits, things uh, look better in the one. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. Da-da. And as you saw there, it means I, I've, I've had to promote. What does that mean? Well, promoting the Brooklyn Life Show. Yeah, promoting whatever products I do. Uh, we covered this. Yes, I am getting a handle on things. Well, I'm trying to, buddy. Uh, video quality is... Uh, oh, man, let's just check. Let's just run. Sorry, I'm just doing a connection test here. My ping is 7, which is brilliant. My upload or my download is 36, 38, 39, 40. Uh, this is megabits per second. 41, 42. So it's should average out at 41.57. And my upload is... Well, it's running between 13, 14 megs a second. Yeah, so that, that's HD quality, man. Oh, I don't know. Maybe all you guys watching porn is the bloody issue. Yeah? Yes, a breakdown does make a little cool little coal forge. Um, although I, I, I really despise coal forges, man. Um, it, it's nothing because of the forge. It is the fact that you need to work your ass off just to get a fire um, and maintain that fire, whereby gas, switch it on, you've got an instant heat done, and it's clean. Your neighbors don't complain because uh, their delicates got uh, smoked out. I don't know. And obviously, I build, commercially build gas forges. So uh, obviously, I'm going to punt gas here. Yeah? So um, <laughs> gas it up, man. Gas it up. Uh, I like it. I, I really like it. And the, the sheer fact is that uh, LPG gas is a natural product um, or a man-made product where coal is not. Yeah. So, I don't know. Over the years, I have worked on coal forges maybe three times, and I don't like them. I think it's since I burnt my first piece of steel. Uh, but yes, I do agree that a breakdown forge is a cool little forge. I've had the misfortune of working on one once. Um, there's nothing. I'm. I'm. Not, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to uh, knock coal forges here. Um, I just hate when you turn around to light up a cigarette and you turn back and the tip of your blade is burnt off. Um, just because you were a bit overzealous, um, pumping air into that little thing. Yeah, man, it is just finicky. Uh, it takes some real skill to run a charcoal forge. Really, it does. Nico, how's it going, man? Thanks, brother. That's appreciated. <laughs> Don't frame the axe. Uh, yeah, you won. Why not? It'll be your act. You can do what it you want. Uh, I was, if, if I could win it, I was going to stick it on my wall. You know, after I played Fruit Ninja with it. Armand, how's it going, brother? Thanks, dude. It's appreciated. <laughs> like that with a small box Matt, Matt that is a cool idea man uh, there's a local knife maker um, good friend Tian Burger um, I think locally he's probably the, the most clued up with regards to uh, um, coal forges uh, and uh, he built box bellows and I think he actually had instructions on that I, I might have to touch base with them um i'm not sure i am not sure but i'm pretty sure all you need to do is just uh do a youtube search man you'll five 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 thousand guys um showing you how to do that Mornay, how's it going buddy and they do tend to do that man um there's nothing wrong with that yeah uh, it's just you can, you can. I don't know, I can manage the atmosphere in a gas forge. But then also I've been using it for 12 years. So, yeah, but they do tend to uh, to sound like Jack Endless, buddy, especially if you've got that thing purring. Uh, <laughs> Dude, Sean, you, you should maybe reevaluate where you're getting your, your coal from <laughs> Don't buy from this, from uh, the place next to the sewage plant. Yeah, 
<laughs> but yes, it is decomposed uh, organic matter. So yes, it will have a smell. No? Excellent. All right, so let's get back to sketching this thing. Um, we've got this little thing here. It's sitting way too high. Uh, this should also move down. I do want to bring this sketch and even that out. So to give more of a, I don't know, a curvature to this line here. And even space it out a bit more. So maybe bring this forward ever so slightly. Uh, back line, back line, back line. Yeah, bring that out even more. If that makes any sense. So like you guys know, um, I had my, recently got my truck back after three months in the shop um, having its well, a uh, oh, hard transplant. Not really. We, we built, rebuilt the engine. So, yeah, hard transplant, yeah. Um, and this morning, I, I want to go to a supplier to go and pick up supplies for the Zacks. And uh, she wouldn't start. So I phoned the guys that uh, did this, uh, did the, the rebuild. And I said, hey, um, did we rebuild the start motor? And he said, no. Uh, they did send it in to have it just verify that everything is cool and 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 and. and take nothing on face value and uh well everything came back brilliant there should be no reason that it's not starting um but this is when you deal with professionals yeah so he said look there's three wires on the back of the starter uh go in and have a look and, and if they call just follow the line of the wires because he knows where i stay dirt roads and uh, well it's only done 400 kilometers since i got it so uh, i mean it should be nothing and chew there's a wire that came loose, not on the starter, but on the actual battery connector. Um, there's a huge industrial connector that we, we upgraded the standard ones, um, and it's got two bolts on the side, and the one didn't have a, a lock, uh, a split washer on it. Yeah, so uh, Tulu sorted that out. Brilliant. So I'm glad to report that uh, my truck is up, yeah, up and running. It's kind of saved me from a heart attack. But now we can see, seeing that I brought this up, that does... A fairly shitty curve there, so I might have to change that even more, bring this spacing in more, which makes things just look ever so slightly better. And this is why, well, I mean, you start off with the standard, I don't know, picture, and people, very, very few people actually realize what it takes is not just making the fucking axe, man. That's the least of the worries. It's interpreting the game art. And the problem is that this is, and yes, I was, this is the best quality I could procure for me. And obviously that curve needs to be curved up even more. And that little there, and I, I do want to make this curve ever so slightly smaller so we could actually see that piece going in there. But I must admit that this is one of the, the two joys out of doing this. Is uh, just taking something out of reality or out of, I don't know, not reality, fantasy, taking it out of fantasy, fantasy and, and bringing it into reality as realistically as possible. And I do want to leave a bit more gap there, as we mentioned earlier, for the carving. Now, obviously, if I decide to make this section broader, to make it more realistic, I will need to redo this entire thing. Because just slapping this in the middle of there, it's just going to look stupid. Yeah, it's not going to look the way that it should. I feel really weird talking to myself. Is there anyone out there that uh, would like to join me in this?
Yeah, the poor, depends on what you mean, dust in the bush. Um, I stay out in the bush, man. And dust is a real thing. Um, so uh, you need a, a proper air cleaner. A proper air cleaner. And I'm, I'm sad to say that 90% of the trucks on the market sold in South Africa do not have proper air cleaners. Yeah, it's one thing to fit a little snorkel key onto your baby. It's another thing to actually uh, put in a McDonald's air filter. I'm saying McDonald's. I don't know. A Donald's air filter, which is a big ass round module. They are expensive, but luckily my truck came with one, as it was a well, it was it is a bloody workhorse. Uh, that there, yeah, I'm talking so much crap, I'm losing my reference. That is an axe I built a couple of years ago, by the way, uh, and I don't know how to change the picture. <laughs> uh, that one is that one. She goes under and over, under and over. That's good. Okay, so that section, we've got that sorted. Yeah, that's pretty set in stone. That there matches up nicely. Uh, is it over, over? Yeah. So my concern there and there, and I've just I oh, see I can I can apply for another loan. I'm not even with fucking F and B. Stop sending me stupid shit. So that there, that there, that's all set. Yeah, I can't use that fucking section in the video. Because some other fucking financial institution decided to send me a unsolicited, although my number is listed for no unsolicited uh, media or promotions. Doesn't stop these plebs. That is looking cool so far. That it is. Yeah. I'm liking it. The base we've got there is cool. I really am liking that. In fact, we've got a bit of space there, a bit of space there. That's good. We've now figured up, up to halfway. So now we move forward. What do we say there? I'm really at the bottom of this. I, I can't really figure out what's that. So, uh, oh, that is fairly simple based on this sketch. It just pops over and under. Pops over, well, over and over. And then it goes up and it calls into that. So that here coming in there is actually this line there. There's an under, doesn't over, doesn't under, doesn't over, doesn't under. Comes in here, it doesn't under. But we did say that I want to move this down. I don't have space here, man. I will need to bring this down even more. Damn it. I think it was all my shading and that for nothing. Bring that down even more, which is now in line, and which means everything will need to come down. And this is also why I develop a drawing on tracing paper, as uh, it doesn't have exposed fibers like you have in normal cartridge paper. So um, your architect years ago knew what the hell they were on about. Yeah. So you could erase 200 times on the same spot without raising the fibers, and your paper doesn't start degrading, falling apart. And then the reason I like these pencils is that it comes with a built-in sharpener at the back. 
but they are really expensive. So this isn't the most uh, enjoyable feed we've ever had, but uh, it, it needs to happen, man. Or well, maybe not for you. I am enjoying myself, but I do want to get that curve and that curve the same. Yeah. So let me just work on that first. To on that curve to match up nicely. And see how this comes up straight. So I might want to drop this down even more. And just teardrop that up nicely. That is better. And now we can trim some fat at the top. Now I'm doing all this and I haven't taken into account. What have I taken not taken into account? I think my phone died again. We are dealing with this guy here. Nice fat curve, nice fat curve. I've got that. I'm liking that. Yeah. I do need to just clean my eraser. But as you can see, I've got a, a nick in my draw style right there where I'm constantly will, will cut in. Which is something that is really irritating, and that's why I rely on turning the page to get smooth curves and not get that little tick when I draw. It's probably a psych just that sort that out. But yeah, like I said, there's enough for me to go uh, to a, uh, I don't know, psychologist and keep him busy for a while. <laughs> uh, who's that, you man? <laughs> no, dude, um, I, I dig brunettes, right? Um, and I did mine, I brought mine into reality quite a few years ago. Yeah, and uh, when she stood still for long enough, I married her. Nathan, I'm good, brother. I am really good, man. And yourself? Uh... Using something like Illustrator, uh, dude, nothing replaces the pen. Yeah, um, if you are moving lines around, it is way, way, way easier to do it with this. Um, Illustrator is just an extension; it's just a program. Um, if you can't do this freehand, you've got no business using Illustrator, man. That's just my personal uh, feeling on the subject, and seeing that I actually did study art, uh, might as well get to use some of the sh that I was taught. So that there, we're now working on, on this little loopy over here. Yeah, so as we can see, we need more space in there. So this needs to come down quite a bit. Yeah, I'm liking that. Maybe not that much, but I do need to open up space there. And it's never about just making your life easy. It is uh, the experience that you gain through doing this and other things. And just using Illustrator, going to a computer program, uh, it might work. But uh, I can tell you one thing. It will never be as satisfying as doing it this way. This cools up and goes over so this cools up 
slight space goes up and then goes over and I'm too high now in there so I want to drop it's down maybe I don't know no, that's the wrong one that goes that goes over and out. That goes up. And does that turn there. Even more. It goes all the way up. That goes up. And it gives me a turn. And that is more of an act of interpreting. This actual drawing. And move this up, just fill the space a bit better. And then obviously we need to thin things out. I do want to make that a tad rounder, not have it as blunt. So I'm going off and drawing again. See that little nick that I have at that one spot. When I draw, I keep on it's like doing a negative on me. You see that? And that is just irritating when that happens. Sorry, don't worry. I've had to deal with that for years. Counseling is something that I'm taking. <laughs> no. I'm liking that. Yeah, so we're not going to spend too much time on this curve, although I do like all of that. That's good. So now I get back to that weird section. Which is this little loopy thing happening here. And it comes from there. So if I look at this one, it comes from there. And it does some weird stuff. See here, you can't see where it's going. See, even on this, this bottom section doesn't make sense on this drawing. You see there? Can't really see. But then here you can see it goes into this little loop. But there's some other thing happening here, which no one knows what it's supposed to be. So we just leave that up. This thing comes up. Can maybe space it a bit closer. Maybe get in there with us. Come back a bit more. I know, but let's figure out where this side goes first. Yeah, no, this is the one that's supposed to come up. And that will go. Let's do something like it. See that little nook again. Something like that. Yeah, and now this weird thing. See, it just looks like it freaking just. I don't know. Okay, so let's go to here. We've got this one coming up. And I've lost it completely. The one coming up is not there no more. So 
gonna go that. Let's do this first. I'm going to do. A smaller. Fill that space. I'm going to go there. Yeah, then it ducks behind. So we've got that. And that tugs in. Do something that looks like it's supposed to come from down there. It doesn't make sense. We've got that line there. Yeah. Under, under. Under, under. But it goes over. So it's under, under, over. Over. Under, under. Under, under, there you can clearly see that's an under and that's an over. Under, under, over. So, over. And then, it's something that comes up here. Yeah. And that is supposed to be so an over. Over. But there, it's an under. I obviously need coffee, I think. Thanks, gentlemen. Well, I have, uh, oh, I have done pretty much every single 3D model uh, of this thing over the last odd four weeks. Well, from about four weeks ago, pulled every single one. Um, I even spent time last night looking at models, um, and they all kind of do their own thing at the back here which is not what we want to do. So we want to get as close as possible to it. Uh, Matt, yeah, it depends on what you speak to, man. You, you can still get into trouble, yeah? Um, <laughs> especially with your wife. What are you doing now? Uh, brother, I am working on the back end, the ass end of this handle, specifically the design. Um, and, and this is the shit that really keeps me awake at night, is getting that inconsistencies, just sorting that out. But I am going to take a bit of a break now, yeah, because I need to go make myself another cup of coffee. I do want to have a cigarette. Uh, so we're going to switch over cameras. Uh, let me just stop my recording here. Stop the recording. We're going to swap cameras. So you can see my pup. Oh, crap. I should have maybe done this, not with the live cat. Come on, pull in here. And then we do that. Yeah, I know I'm washed out. That's because of all the overhead lights. All of those sitting there. So what you guys up to? 
<coughs> so um, it's official. I actually do have a uh, tick bite fever again. So that's why uh, things are going a bit slow. Got some meds in yesterday, which is brilliant. Freaking headache has finally left. And uh, yeah, man. So it's the third time this year. Beauty of staying in a nature reserve, yeah? And uh, my dogs are barking, so obviously someone's here. So how you guys been doing? Mitch, how's it going, brother? Sorry, let me just kind of get onto a, uh, well, it's not a notepad, but. Mitch, how's it going, man? Yo, you drive safe, brother. You drive safe, man. And uh, let me know what your plans are for uh, Blade 2021, yeah? Because I am definitely going. Sean, I like that idea, man. All right, so my wife did tell me that I should smoke less on camera. Um, I try. I really do try. And I'm trying to smoke a bit less in general. But um, so far, stuff like this yeah, is driving me completely nuts. But I am loving it. When I say completely nuts, it's the, it's the challenge, man. I really dig the challenge. And it's not just about making the thing. It's about figuring it out. Um, and getting to as close as possible to this thing. But I'm just noticing something else. Um, there's also a bit more detail that I came across on this post that the guy gave me. That the guys gave me. Not the guy. The guys. Uh, let me just change cameras again. See this little head here? And it looks like there's a... It's either an inlay... Or a little ridge on there. Now, obviously, this thing is not ours. Is not as curved. Ours has actually got a proper axe profile in there. Thanks. Um, and you can see the handle is an, isn't actually round. You can see clearly from here that the handle is actually oval. Um, and this is where, you, especially, you have a look at the back. Everything is oval. Nothing is round. Um, and I'm suspecting this is actually not an oval, and it's more to where I went with this as a triangle. Maybe not as as astute as this, but um, it is definitely not round. And that is the reason I, I don't touch dust the uh, 3D sketches. As soon as you switch on, or you switch on, switch on, because I need to switch it on. I'm going to leave that axe there. Yeah, uh, This is one I did crap quite a couple of years ago. Um, I think this one, was it that I took to Blade Show two years ago? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember. But that was quite a nice one. And this is much more bent than the one we're building currently. So in other words, this coming down here. So I'm not in picture. So the blade on that one is a lot more pronounced. It comes down to about there. That was uh, quite a nice one, but it's fairly close to this. And uh, the cheeks in here, that was also a lot thinner, and I made that there isn't as broad. I don't particularly like this whole broadness, but uh, for the carving, it's working well, man. So the carving that is working really well, yeah. And the brown you see on here is uh, the color from the temper. Yeah, so we haven't uh, that straight as it is out of temper. All I did was take a bit of uh, steel wool to it and uh, just to smooth out the surface ever so slightly. It hasn't been oiled. I actually might just, I don't know, clean it up and then uh, do a rust aging on this just to get the surface texture a bit rusted. I don't want to show rust. I just want a bit of pitting. I might just do that with a, a mustard edge. But I haven't made up my mind yet. So... Done. Now you guys realize that this is a competition, yeah? And you can actually win this axe, some real merch um, from the game. And, and trust me, I've, I've seen some of the, the merchandise. And it's cool, man. And it's really cool. Look at that little guy that I managed to get my grubby little hands on. Yeah? That is cool. Odin is watching. So he's sitting right on my desk, and he's keeping an eye on me. Uh, but you can win 
obviously uh, Xbox One X, the newest freaking square version of this. And uh, go check out the pricing on those, yeah. And then you realize that you, you, you might just want one. The crunching power on that thing is unbelievable. The, re the reviews I've seen on it is just phenomenal, man. Um, and then secondly, you can win a copy of the game. That's a thousand bucks plus. Yeah, done. Uh, I've got a uh, copy of the game and I've, I've been playing it, although it is not the best player out there. Admittedly, I'm much better with a hammer than I am with a, a controller. Uh, but I have been enjoying it, yeah. Uh, and obviously my kids are, are in exams, so uh, they got to play over the weekend. Just a small tad, and I can tell you one thing, my little one, I don't know, he is hooked. Now, Luan, Luan the older, eldest one, um, he hasn't had any time on the game yet. Nothing. Nothing. And he's really upset with that. Um, but he'll get into it, man. He'll get into it. Uh, I've lost my cursor. The short is saying, okay, uh, wife won't have smoke. <laughs> so I stopped brying. No, dude, you can't stop brying. You can't. We're actually doing a poiki today. A pork pot. Nice. And here comes the second cup of coffee. Thanks, buddy. That's appreciated, man. And I'm doing that, as you can see. Um, I'm now extremely self-conscious with this thing, so I'm kind of hiding. <coughs> Damn it. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. And I need to probably go and get some more medication, man. I've turned down the lights, but it is really getting to me. Uh, but anyway, this thing is kicking my ass, yeah? It really is. But I'm looking at this this poster, and there's a load of uh, uh, different warriors and, and their uh, attire. And I'm thinking that I might just want to build one of these things. I don't know. Out of leather. Uh, but I don't have enough leather for that. So I might just have to go get a, I don't know, for two full sheets and start playing. Maybe get ready for uh, on a rage next year and go as a a year old gamer, oh game character. I don't care, but that is looking cool. I, I might just have to build armor. I don't know if uh, they approach me again to come build a weapon. I might just say no. I want to do a gauntlet or something or a uh, uh, what's it? The brace. You'll see. There's one guy who's got metal over leather. Uh, it's strips of metal. Which has also been etched. And that looks cool. And I wouldn't mind having a, uh, you know, just one for myself. So I might just build that. Uh, but that was it. Finished my smoke. I'm now going to go on to a cup of coffee and then I'm going to figure out this stupid freaking design that is kicking my ass. Yeah. So then I'm going to figure out this top section. And um, then we're going to go back to, I don't know, photocopy, photocopy this. Um, and to get a mirror or that, you obviously just, as it is in the photocopy like that, flip it over, do a photocopy like that, and there you got your mirror. Then I'm going to transfer it to uh, the, ah, I just spilled my coffee. Then I'm going to transfer it to um, that section there, make any updations that I need to into this the carving section, the, the section that I've hollowed out there. And once I'm happy with the, the side one, as I'm calling it, then I'll do a template of that cut out and then transfer it to here and then carve and do the inlay. Okay. Or not inlay, the, the carving over there. So the whole idea, and this is where I'm heading tomorrow morning, is to go and get pewter. Well, I want to cover this entire section with pewter, but we don't know if that is actually going to do the trick. So I don't know. I might just bring you guys into a one-day pewter working class that I'm hoping to attend tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. So, let's see who else. Uh, Mickey, how's it going, man? Uh, I'd love to see an armor build. Yeah, me, me too. Yeah, I actually have a good mate for years um, that, that builds armor in his spare time. Um, and I might just do a collab with him. Uh, seeing that he's now got his uh, shop set up. So, Kelvin, if you're watching this, uh, brother, give me a call. Yeah, He built uh, me some some night gloves. I don't know what you call them. Um, a couple of years ago um, when I did a one-and-a-half blasted sword. 
but the sword sold, obviously, and uh, the gentleman that, that bought the sword uh, wanted those gloves with it, so um, I parted with it, and I've been kicking my ass ever since. I think there's one photo of me holding onto the sword with the two gloves, yeah, um, while it was still building, and that was in, oh, I can't remember how many years ago, gauntlets, there we go, Nathan, thank you, man, uh, those gloves are called gauntlets, 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 um, and I see Jock is going, <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, Van Brace. Yeah, man. I, I, um, I saw a. It wasn't a time left build. Is uh, the model is uh, the armor is made from leather. All right, um, uh, uh, hardened just veg tan leather. Um, and it's it's untanned. Uh, uh, yeah, untanned. So uncolored, un anything. But it was. It was carved, it was stamped, it was full-on armor um, that is on a mannequin, and the mannequin is spinning. Um, and that just, bam, that was just unbelievable. Uh, the detail, I can tell you that, that 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 guy spent. I think he mentioned something like two and a half years working four hours a week on it. Now, four hours a week is not much. It's a half an hour per night for four nights um, during a week. Um, and he says well, that's what he average spent, but four years, four years. I think it was four years, two years, four years. I can't remember, but it was a crap house full of time that he spent on that. Um, and it looked absolutely unbelievable. Sorry, man, I'm, I'm looking at comments and it looks like I'm skill again because my camera isn't really set up. Normally, I have the, the camera set up right in front of the comments so. When I actually read the comments, it does look like I'm kind of looking at uh, the camera, but now everything is not set up, and I can't twist anything out. How's that? Does it now look like I'm looking at you guys when I'm reading comments? No, not really. But anyway, let's get this thing out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen. Nathan, I will definitely do that. Thanks for the, the heads up, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on uh, this, well, building the axe of evil for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And now I'm popping over to, there we go, it's episode 2.1 for the guys that are counting. Watch out, uh, keep an eye out for episode 2.2. Um, the live stream is where you get to see what I'm doing and the, the struggling and the bladder, bladder, bladder. Um, but that's about it, yeah? Uh, will I have a video ready by Friday? I do hope so. It's going to be an extremely boring one because uh, we'll only be working on the, the handle. Uh, but you might see me playing with a bit of pewter in preparation for fixing up the handle. Will the build be finished this week? No, it will not. But the competition does close on Friday, the 20th. Yeah. So if you're not in it yet, Damn, man, look at the description below. Any one of the, wherever you're seeing this video, just pop down and look in the description. There's a link to uh, go and, and well, enter the competition. Yeah, and I'm going to link that up there. The, the link to the competition should also be in there. So, so, once again, just to recap what you can win here, it is this axe I'm making. All right, and if I had the choice, I would keep this thing. Um, that's the axe. Number two is the game itself Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla merch, merchandise, yeah, T-shirts, blah, 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 blah. There's even a Black Dragon Forge buff in there for you. Um, and then the Xbox One X, X1, whatever the newest one is. That thing is a freaking monster. My kids have been drooling and they've been begging me for one, which they're not going to get, yeah? Because in my house, you work for your money. Um, and uh, they have got Brooklyn Night Show coming up. And collectively, the two boys are building knives, um, and Luan will be manning the table, and he will be selling his knives. And, uh, well, it's their money, what they get out of it, and uh, they can spend on whatever they want. And I'm pretty sure there's an entire list of things that they want that's going to, oh, I don't know, make them want to get the Xbox. Well, maybe, maybe. I don't, I don't know. All right. But anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, go and enter the competition. And uh, good luck to each and every one of you because I can't enter, which really suck. Yeah, I need to work that into the contract for next time, mate. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good one. Uh, thank you for tuning in. 
and uh, we are going to get to the last two comments. Uh, Nick uh, Monaya saying, Cheers for years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you very much, sir. That is really appreciated. All right, guys, that was it. Um, love you, leave you. Check you on the flip side.